time to go, keep at all costs, or keep if you can. So let's go through some of the players here. Let's start first and foremost with um, Mohamed Salah, who said, obviously, this past week, he started to at least talk about the situation with Liverpool. Um, and obviously, there's interest from Saudi Arabia, and I'm sure maybe interest from elsewhere as well. So from a contract standpoint, is it keep at all costs? You dump a lot of money to the 32-year-old who's been unbelievable for Liverpool. You keep it if you can to get the right price, or is it time for these two parties to move on? Well, full disclosure, Dallin, I will just tell you this. There's only a handful of players in the world right now that are in the category of keep at all costs. Everybody else's name is available for negotiation. Mm -hmm. And that includes even a guy like Mohamed Salah and his productivity for Liverpool. Now, what I'm surprised to hear is what he said over the weekend in that, hey, Liverpool haven't spoken to me. Uh, so I'm assuming this is my last year at Liverpool. That's mm -hmm. surprising. But maybe that's a call from Mohamed Salah to the club and say, hey, listen, I'd be happy to come back and play for Liverpool. I love this place. I'm scoring goals. I'm happy here, but you got to talk to me. I think this is one of those keep if you can, but if somebody throws silly money at you and you're Liverpool, you'll consider it. Again, keep if you can with, uh, with thinking about the future and potentially what do you do with Mohamed Salah and what potentially can you do with the money that you could get for Mohamed Salah. That's the thing that's interesting, Nelly, is like obviously with rumors in the past off seasons about potentially interest from Saudi, what that number could actually be. It, maybe Liverpool's almost sitting there saying like, all right, we, let's, it's like not a fait accompli, but we could be getting a bag right now. Let's take the bag and reinvest it. And maybe mm -hmm. that's why they haven't engaged as much, but it, they're going to do their due diligence, I imagine, have a conversation with a guy that has been uh, that productive. But it will be one to see, and I understand exactly where you're going. I understand what you said, too. You know, there's keep it all costs. There's only a couple names, if you will. Mm -hmm. Everybody's expendable including us as ESPN as well. Uh, I digress. Whoa. Let's go. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. We, don't have a, we, don't, we don't have to put it out there like that. We are hey, keep wait, it all costs, Dallin. Keep wait, wait, it I, all costs. I'm, unbelievably so. We are keep it all costs. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, Virgil van Dyke, 33, Liverpool center back, obviously, you know, coming maybe to the tail end of the career here. Where do you stand with, uh, with the big center back? I'm going to go the same as Mohamed Salah. Keep if you can. And, and, and really leaning towards keep at all costs because I do think that it has – Virgin van Dijk has a tremendous importance to what this team does defensively, to how much space they leave themselves open when they get out in transition because they're going to go press high. And then other teams break through that initial pressure. You have to have leadership in that back line. And Virgil van Dijk gives you that. But again, where he is in his career, what his, what his trend is going to be from here on now, we assume, as we assume with players that get to this age, that things are not going to continue to be on a higher trajectory it's going to come back to the rest of the world it's going to go back in a trajectory in which perhaps he's not going to be nearly as productive as he has been for liverpool so i'm going to say keep if you can but don't go crazy keep if you can if this makes sense for everybody involved the first two we started with that the age piece was uh, on that question of are, are we teetering towards the, the, the back end of the career are we going to see a you know a crest to the other side if you will the next couple of names we're going to touch on are guys who were into their prime or going into their prime let's stay with liverpool though Trent alexander arnold um where he plays how he functions is, is a you know, what is he enough of a defender constant conversation but the guy is fantastically talented especially with the ball on, on putting the ball into the box he's 25 uh where do you see him Alex? this is one of those where you take it from the perspective of the player do you take it from the perspective of the club when everything or when anything goes wrong defensively for Liverpool, the first player that we look at is, well, Trent is not defending. Like mm -hmm. he's not, if he's not going to defend, how can he be a right back? Uh, I guess we got to play him in the midfield. What are we going to do with Trent? It, and he always seems to be sort of the point of the conversation. And, and some of it, it's, it's because of his own doing or not doing defensively, if indeed that's the case. Uh, I would say, I think at this point, it's probably time to go for Trent Alexander-Arnold. I, I, I would keep if I could, but I'm not pushing too hard. Uh, and it feels like if you start reading between the lines, it's that he's ready to go. And if, if that's mm -hmm. the case, I think uh, it's probably best for both parties to go separate ways. That's the part that I felt that was interesting. I, I get I from, again, I'm just reading stuff. I'm not talking to anybody there. I'm definitely not talking to Trent. But you get the sense that, like, Maybe he's looking for something else. Maybe there's there's a, a different challenge ahead. And again, at 25, with the talent that he does have, although you know questions around different positions and how you use him, 
you could probably get a, a, a good return on your money for that and, and, and move him on somewhere else and again reinvest those those dollars somewhere else so don't really have much of a disagreement with you let's go to a uh, Alfonso Davies for Bayern, uh, one of the best outside backs in the world. Um, the young Canadian has, has, has thrived there, but has also, you know, had some different patches at, at Bayern. So uh, he's, he's intimated at times that he would want to go elsewhere. Should Bayern try to keep him in Bavaria? And we just mentioned upward trajectory. Uh, we thought that that's where Alfonso Davies was heading. We thought that that's where his career was going was gonna to explode and become this dominant left back and you just mentioned one of the best outside backs in the world i i would say he was one of the best yeah. outside backs in the world i think he actually has regressed over the last year and a half couple of seasons or so and i actually i'm looking at a player that not nearly as confident as, as he once was and not really comfortable that actually bayern munich has made enough of an effort to keep him around and so it feels like for Alfonso Davis and the best of his career, and whatever that means in the future, I think it's time to go. Bayern Munich haven't really committed to him. He hasn't really committed to Bayern Munich. And so, look, if both parties are not exactly passionate about this relationship, then, uh, look, I'm not, doc I'm not Dr. Love here, but maybe you go separate ways. Yeah, no divorce lawyers either. It's free if they just want to move on at this point in time. Um, All right. It, okay. <laughs> sometimes we inject our personal stuff into stuff. You know, just fire away. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, All right dude. In, in terms of uh, in terms of Davies, though, this is only three because yeah, yeah, you're right. I kind of misspeaking. He he at one point I don't think it was inarguable. I mean, two seasons ago, I mean, yeah, probably one of the best outside backs in the world. How, how does he get? What, what has happened? What what do you think has been the issue? And is he capable of returning to what what seemed like an obvious trajectory to be on a a whole different level. I, I think he has to go back to very basic things. And when I say very basic, I mean really core basic stuff. Complete a pass. Defend well. Be able to utilize your speed both defensively and, of course, offensively. And once you get yourself into an attacking position, find a pass. Find a cross that makes sense. Be impactful in the final third because you can utilize that speed there's been a whole lot of conversation about Alfonso Davis, and I think he has lost himself in that conversation, in that speculation. And he has forgotten about taking care of his job. And in the middle of all that, Bayern Munich have been struggling. They've been, there have been coaching changes. And when Thomas Tuchel came in, he owed nothing to Alfonso Davis. And so mm -hmm. when he didn't feel Alfonso Davis was given the very best version of himself, Thomas Tuchel was very quick to say, Alfonso, go sit. And then injuries came about, and that lack of confidence grew, and we are seeing some of those lingering effects still in his career. I do think that it, it would be best for him to find somewhere different to go. All right, let's keep it at Bayern. Uh, Leroy Sané is a guy that you, know, you can turn on a game anytime in the last three or four years, and you see spectacular stuff, and you see some stuff you don't like. So where, where, where are you at? Again, this is a guy that's in his prime, theoretically, 28 years old, with Sané. Look... Uh, this, I, I suppose that I should preface this by saying I've had enough of Leroy Sané. <laughs> uh, I, look, we, we cover Bundesliga on a weekly basis. And, and to watch him be at the heights that you have mentioned and then be as slow as you can possibly be and so much space in between. The variance of performance from Leroy Sané from, from the very high to the very low is just too much. It's just too much to deal with. And so he generates this expectation because of this talent. And I think he has done that over the course of his career. And when you see those flashes, you say, yes, yeah, super. This guy's going to take us to the next level. And that's when you get in trouble. I would say keep if you can, but don't go crazy, honestly. Don't go, don't go believing that this is a guy that is going to take you to the next level. Believe that this is a nice piece to have that on his best days can really help you, but expect that there are going to be other days in which you're going to wonder, what is this guy doing on the field? Mm -hmm. um, let's go to France. Uh, Jonathan David, has been, he's, been, he's been at top of the table in terms of goal scored in recent seasons with Lille. Um, a little bit of a different conversation, you know, being in league on, it's, is it a matter of, does he need to move on? Do Leo want to keep him at all costs? Like where, where do you fall with Jonathan David? Only 24, the Canadian forward, very talented. He gone. He time to go. And, yeah. and, and I think from both parties, again, Lille and for Jonathan David, and let's, let's also talk about the fact that 
he didn't play last weekend against PSG uh, because him and a couple of his teammates were suspended, uh, suspended by the team. And the conversation surrounding that has been that they missed a meal and that's why there were some disciplinary reasons and whatever the case may be and decisions made by Lille. When those things start to happen and you're coming to the end of a contract, it's far more complex than just missing a meal or missing a team meeting. There are other things going on and there is a lot of interest for him in other places, mainly in Serie A. There is conversation with Juventus or Milan and in, Inter as well. If indeed these people are in the conversation, I think if you're a little, you're saying to yourself, all right, dude, enough is enough. And he's probably saying the same thing. I think it's time to go. He gone. Yeah. It's, and once your head is turned, especially for young athletes, your head is turned to any sport. You, you, you can waver where you're at right then that moment. That can hurt your game. It also can hurt some decision making. It hurts both parties. So we'll see. And hopefully he can he moves on and finds a situation that's uh, advantageous for him. And Leo will get some bucks on the way. It may be, maybe, maybe given this for a contract situation. Maybe not. All right. Uh, Denzel Dumfries, 28 years old at Inter. Um, where do you want? Where, what do you see with him? Yeah, you, you keep if you can. And, and for both parties, I think it makes sense for them to stay together. Uh, and, and I think actually this is a deal that is it, it's expected to be done following the international break. Uh, they've, been, they've been apart. They've been closed. They've been apart again. They've been closed. There's too much flirting. There's too much flirting. Mm -hmm. And if, the, if there's too much flirting, there is something going on here. They can't keep themselves away from each other. And so, therefore, enter and don't sell, don't freeze. Keep if you can. Okay. Let's get back to the Premier League uh, and talk to them. Sonny, uh, everybody's one of the fan favorites around the world, uh, the, the, the winger, the striker, whatever you want to refer to him as. Um, well, Son, is he, is he a keep-it-all-cost type guy for Spurs? I'm saying he gone, and I'm saying this from the perspective of him being Son. What else is he going to do at Spurs? Mm. What, is, what else is there for him to do? And whatever they were going to achieve, they, are, they have already achieved. So the best of his times at Spurs, I think, are both behind Spurs and behind Song. I think there may be a reason for him to look elsewhere, for him to see what his value is elsewhere and a different experience. Unless he's quite comfortable at Spurs and just kind of being this team that threatens but not quite good enough. They're sort of kind of, yeah, they're trending, but not really. That's what they have been over the past decade or so. And, and, and that coincides with his time at Spurs. I, I really don't, don't see Hyun Ming Song doing anything more than what he has already done at Spurs. And there would be something appealing to going somewhere else and perhaps seeing what his value is somewhere else. Okay. We'll end the conversation in terms of players of these 2025 uh, potential free agents. And Kevin De Bruyne, he's 33 now. He's at City. You know, Pep's contract also ends at the end of this season in 2025. It could be a changing of the guard. Hold on. You skipping on Joshua Kimmich or what? We don't want to talk oh, about Oh, we Joshua skipped Kimmich. Kimmich. You're right. Oh, my. Well, let's go back to Bayern. You're right. You want to get to Bayern? You get, it. get into Kimmich. Let's go. Get into Kimmich. <laughs> give, me, give me the minute. He gone. Go. He gone. There he you gone. go. <laughs> he, he gone. And, 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 and this is why I think he gone. Uh, and it's happening now in real time with Vincent Company, and it happened with Thomas Tuchel as well. For so many years, Joshua Kimmich, we thought of him uh, being the leader of Bayern Munich in that midfield. Thomas Tuchel comes in and says, I don't think that this guy can play in the midfield and can do the role that I'm asking him to do. Sometimes lacks discipline, sometimes lacks understanding and reading of the game. I actually prefer for him to go and play as a right back. And you kind of go, well, maybe that's just Thomas Tuchel being Thomas Tuchel. And he, he, he made a decision and he was, was going to stick with that decision and was going to go with a different pairing of midfielders. Okay. Thomas Tuchel walks out the door. Vincent Company comes in. And what does he do? He's now playing Joshua Kimmich as a right back. But, hey, when we're in possession, tuck inside and be part of the midfield. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're trying to find a place for him. And yet his contract for the leader of Bayern Munich, for a big president of Bayern Munich, is still to be worked on. It's still to be done, still to be finalized. So how much of a leader is he? How much of the future plans is he a part of? It doesn't seem like anybody's committed to Joshua Kimmich. And it's not, it, it seems like he's, nobody's committed to Joshua Kimmich as the midfielder of Bayern Munich. So, yeah, you start reading the signs, he gone. That conversation for him, right back and him in midfield, I feel like that's his entire career. This has been this push-pull of which manager was there or was he playing national team? Was he playing as a club team? And who was the manager at that time? It's been a nonstop discussion. We'll see how that shakes out. All right, now let's get to De Bruyne and end the thing with a 33-year-old. Is he out? Is, is, it, is it more money, greener pastures elsewhere for him? Or you know, would, would City try to you know, keep him around, keep the band together a little bit longer? 
I, I think you keep the band together uh, if you can, but this is sort of copy paste from the Mohammed Salah conversation. Uh, you throw out some silly money out there, then you kind of go, if you're Manchester City, you, you, I can see how you can convince yourself, oh, well, you know, mm-hmm. we have Phil Foden, Bernardo Silva, Gundogan is back. Uh, mm-hmm. I think we have enough. Rodri, obviously, the leader of that midfield, and you start thinking, mm, maybe, maybe he's expendable, but in order for him to be expendable, it has to be something silly. Uh, I, I think if you can, and if you can work it out, and if everybody can be happy with the numbers, I think you keep Kevin De Bruyne around, because I still think that he can give you something impactful, not only, obviously, this season, but in years to come as well. Just big picture question to kind of wrap this thing up as it relates to the contracts and, and, the, and the transfer market. Do you sense this thing? Like, obviously, we saw what's happened with Victor Osman. We've seen other players. The, the market is, is thought that would bear a certain number for him. It did not. And these players, there's a lot of named players here and a lot of guys in their 20s that may become free agents. I feel like we didn't see that as much in the last, in, you know, four or five years ago. Does the transfer market feel and seem different to you in terms of just the, the, money, that, the money that's available and who's willing to spend it at this point in time? Well, I think there are a couple of parts of that conversation is that now we have the dynamics of Saudi Arabia that throw the markets in, into a completely spin. It's a market of its own. Mm-hmm. And so when they start throwing money that is that is well above what you're willing to negotiate as a club, then it puts you in a very, in a very uncomfortable position. And so you're almost at the mercy of, of, of what Saudi Arabia is going to do. And and look, if they're going to throw that sort of money, we're not going to try to compete with that. And so it really it really depends on the player and the experience of the player and, and the relationship of the player. How much does he care about the club? How much is he integrated into the club? How much does he think he needs this in order to secure his future, his family's future, his family's family's future? Mm-hmm. And so th- there are many decisions that come into this that – are affected by the fact that Saudi Arabia on its own is saying, yep, this is what we'll pay and nobody can compete with that. And so that has conditioned the conversations. But those that are not actually in the Saudi Arabia conversation, then they are trying to fill in the gaps for those players that are saying, yeah, we'll take that money. And so the rest of that money is supposed to be going to this sort of second tier of a group of players. And if you're a club, you're like, wait, 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 wait. Just because they're, they're overpaying over there doesn't mean that we have to overpay. We don't. We cannot play that game with them, and so we're going to have to create our own market here, independent of of whatever is going on in Saudi Arabia. And it's a really difficult conversation because every player thinks that they deserve the most money in the whole entire world. And so, if you're a club, you are the one that has to make the decision and saying, "Yeah, you are not worth nearly as much as you think you are." But hey, if you stick around. Really play for us. Love us because we love you. That is a very tricky place to be.